I've actually got a slightly funny left elbow as a result of <laughs> juggling a chainsaw. Oh, well, hey, that sounds like a good story yeah. to go to. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Um, I was trimming an Arbutus and had, uh, had climbed this darn thing and, and it, it had, it had gone off and, uh, and I was pulse starting it, but for some ridiculous, uh, spontaneous reason, it seemed to make sense to, to, to use the pull, do the pull start with my left arm, which instead of my right, because of the shape of the tree. Anyway, it turned out that was the wrong choice and I managed to uh, pull something in my elbow. At least you didn't like yank the chainsaw over onto yourself and into correct bad situation. So. Correct. No amputation. Um, how is everybody? Good, good. Um, I'm just wondering, any thoughts on the Apple Vision Pro announcements? Did you look at them, catch up, uh, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think it's a smart design. I think it would be a lot smarter if it if it wasn't a virtual view of the outside, right? I think like that sort of, especially because like that was not clear in their advertising. I think the persona thing's a little goofy, right? There's your your chunk of your face virtually rendered on the front of the thing. That, that uh, when I when I read that, I'm like, whoa, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> I really I had thought that like it was a see through in the first like few iterations. I was looking at the stuff there, but uh, I think that like the the mechanism of having the cameras in the device, uh, that's really smart, right? The biggest obstacle is nobody can use a device unless they have a huge amount of room normally because you have to hook up all the cameras to detect you, right? You don't need that. Awesome. That's a cool idea. Um, I thought it was really interesting that they stuck an M2 chip in there. That's basically a full-on MacBook. Um, we'll see if it doesn't burn people's faces off. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe people will drop a little M2 brand on their forehead. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think like it's probably the first one of these devices that's a step in the right direction and i think like the the concept is a good concept right nobody wants to sit and knock off second life without legs doing meetings whereas like placing it within the context of hey you're just pulling up more windows inside the real world or you can enlarge a window or close a window like all of those mechanisms i think are really cool It'd just be a lot more effective if I wasn't reliant on the cameras to make sure I didn't trip over my own feet. Uh, <laughs> Did anybody manage to sort of count the cameras on the device? I don't know how many cameras are facing inward, but I imagine it's one per eye at least uh, because it's eye tracking like crazy, apparently really accurately. Then there's downward, there's two, I think, two downward facing cameras, one under each eye for your hands to catch gestures. Then there's at least one forward facing camera because you can use this as a snap go uh, goggles. Hey, Flansian, having trouble hearing us? All right. Come in, come in, Flansian. Um, and then uh, it has a LiDAR camera of some sort also forward facing. And I may be missing a couple of cameras. I don't know. 12 altogether. 12? Oh, wow. Two forward facing, two downward, two side, two true depth, and four internal infrared plus four lidar. Four internal plus lidar. So is that thirteen? Because uh, you said all twos. Six, two, thirteen. Yeah. They, they, the, the thing I'm reading doesn't count the lidar as a as, as a, a camera. camera. But I, yeah, I, I would sort of lump it in there. Um, that is also a, it yeah. sucks that I was just gonna say also though it sucks that it doesn't work with glasses. Wait, 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 what? <laughs> but I think um, Sice or somebody is going to make lenses so that you get you get custom eyepieces if to your prescription if you need glasses. But you can't wear glasses and have the headset on. Right? No, but but like other VR devices have figured that out by like giving you adjustments to the screen right. and yeah. the screen position. But here. You're going to have to buy essentially a separate pair of prescription glasses for you on top of your $3,500 device in order to um, be able to use it if you have glasses. And apparently some conditions it doesn't work on at all. So like um, I, it was reported, I haven't seen them reporting it, 
a bunch of people reported that like astigmatism you can't use it. Um, it can't what? track the eye properly. No, yeah. come on. That's what I saw multiple people report record uh, report rather. Wow. Uh, but it has something to do with like the eye tracking process apparently. That's interesting. King cameras. I, I, I'm okay with it. So the way to say it is not that it doesn't work with glasses. It's that you get to buy your Zeiss inserts. Well, that means you get to buy another though. pair of glasses. <laughs> that means you don't get to wear, that means it won't work that you just slap on any device. You have to actually have one that has your lenses in it, right? Yeah, I've got, I've got in, an insert for my scuba mask. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just the price of admission of using a fancy, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I like, I don't expect my scuba mask to, to fit these glasses. Anyone else with opinions on the Apple Vision Pro announcement? Well, indeed, when you order it, uh, you scan your face with some sort of uh, iPhone app um, uh -huh. so that it can uh, build a, so that they can custom manufacture a face sucker <laughs> for your particular visage. Oh, wait. So, so on yeah. ordering, you send in a face map? Uh, yeah. I think that's how, I, that's what, that's what, what's his name? Oh, Marcus? I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't know that. This? Yeah. Wow, I, I, thought, I, I thought that was really part of it. Uh, when you initialize it, when you get it, I thought you'd do a face map in mm. order, in order that, that oh. I can present your face. I didn't. I oh. didn't think that they were manufacturing anything custom per individual. I you know, huh? Okay, yeah. No, I've only seen one piece of information yeah. with regard to that, and it could be that I misinterpreted. I think I, I, I do I... believe it's part of setup so that they mm -hmm. can oh, uh, okay. poorly face map and lip sync you. Uh, for your avatar and for your outbound uh, imagery, but the idea that it has a that it has a, a display on the outside—it's so goofy. I mean, I understand the idea, but it just sounds and feels. And once you realize that it's like not even a real live image, that it's a VR image, and you see it in the demos, you're like, "Oh, I see it now," and it's goofy. <laughs> but it fools you for a while. You're like, oh, look, I can see through these things. Yes. It, well, that's a <laughs> artifact of very smart video direction. Yeah. I don't think it'll be that way when you see someone wearing it. <laughs> uh, I, I'm looking forward <laughs> to the apps that let you manipulate what your pupils look like. You know, like lizard-like reptilian. <laughs> oh, I want sheep pupils. They're just really eerie. I mean, I, I think, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, despite the issue with the first recommendation, and I actually haven't kept that, uh, that much up to date with it, I think the idea of like having a device that projects out uh, reminds me a lot of like this uh, science fiction novel I read by Greg Egan, you know, mathematician. Sure. Where like, yeah, where like they project like what they call auras, I think. So essentially you can uh, say, uh, express your mood by, you know, how you uh, actually project uh, Was images. This from uh, Permutation City? Uh, this is actually diaspora, which is oh. the uh, I read those two and they're both amazing. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So you know, um, I, I guess uh, yes. I for I, I remain equally skeptical also of like uh, what is like a luxury device. Clearly, like a lot of what we uh, have right in the yeah. in many of us with our privilege. But like um, also like I look forward to see to seeing how people uh, use this to express themselves. Yes. Yeah, I I also do wonder how like it's going to change some of the acceptable behavior in Zoom chats, right? Because right now it, it's is that really acceptable? We actually have someone at my work who like goes into all the Zoom chats with like the emoji mapped thing of a panda bear. Uh, like it, it's weird and noticeable. I do wonder if like having dead-eyed VR versions of yourself is going to become acceptable to Zoom chats. And then, like, what does everyone do it regardless of whether they're in a face thing or not? Like, I don't know. It just reminds me of uh, a couple of years it, when, like, Zoom had just started. I was, ha like, working on stuff that had me pulled into a bunch of boring meetings that I didn't want to be in. Um, and they just, I needed to be there to, uh, like, listen for my name to be called, essentially. Right, right. Um, and all of my video I do on here at home, I run through OBS. 
Um, that's what allows you to clip out the background so you can't see the fact that I live in a tiny New York City apartment and I'm surrounded by the sink directly behind me. Uh, I mean, it looks lovely. Yeah, like, just the books are like uh, sort of like uh, on the same topic. It's like it's like knowing you a bit by the books. So I love that. I have to say. Yeah, I like and I like having the books as the background. But when I was in the boring meetings, the thing I could do with OBS is I just recorded a loop of me looking attentive. Yeah, exactly. Um, I and played wondering. that back and went went off to do something else. Um, and look, he's an animated GIF. Yeah, basically that's what it is. I mean, obviously, like, if I went around saying that I was going to do that, that wouldn't be acceptable. But we're yeah. basically talking about a device that does that automatically. I mean, you could, nobody's going to know unless you fall asleep, yeah. right? <laughs> that you might be doing something entirely different um, in then, the real world. Then you could have the name recognition and poke me in the side subroutine. Sorry, Fontaine, what are you saying? Can you, oh, uh, for Google Meet, you can actually upload a video. Oh, really? So you can yes. do that intentionally in Google Meet? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, a, a co-worker uh, did this, and it's very cool because, like, uh, he filmed himself in the office after going remote, uh, before going remote, of course. And then uh, at some part of the video, he actually does like this and, like, looks over his own shoulder. Good effect. Yes. <laughs> in a loop. That's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, but like I don't want to like you know uh, have a, like commercial solicitation here. Hey, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I want to say quickly that I may not stay the whole uh, hour because uh, I have a fever. So by the way, yes, please excuse oh, me. Man. Oh man. Oh, so bad. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So I may just like uh, go out and like uh, quickly uh, crash. But yes, uh, glad to be here, just listening. All right. Um, I I just w I was reading something about the Apple Vision Pro this morning and. Uh, the Meta's headset was $1,500 and nobody bought it. And this is more than twice the amount. And unusual for Apple, usually when Apple does an announcement, they ship like you can, you can kind of click on a button in a month or so and, and order the thing. This ships next year. And I was like, that's just really weird. So, so between the, the like crazy expense, and the expense makes a lot of sense given how much technology is in it. And I think there's so much technology in it because they elegantly solved a whole series of extremely thorny problems about, hey, how do we control this thing? Oh, forget controllers. We're going to do gesture recognition. Oops. Okay. How do we do that? Um, well, I think it's, oh, yeah, I think it's more than that though, right? Like the price makes sense because the Oculus Rift was $1,500 for a device that did nothing but plug into your computer and map your movements against a bunch of expensive cameras around your house, right? Mm -hmm. The difference with this is you are actually buying a full MacBook that just happens to sit on your face, mm -hmm. um, which I think makes the price go down a little easier. Like if I didn't have to worry about the, subs if I didn't have to worry about the prescriptions, you know, maybe I would consider that because so I'd I buy a MacBook. So I wouldn't, so, I would just want the functionality and I would rather the computing be not on the headset, but be offload, off board, offloaded somewhere to some other device and Bluetooth or whatnot could give you pretty nice uh, communications um, because the user shouldn't care that if this is a full blown M2 Mac with an R1 new newfangled sensor that's doing all the sensor fusion and everything else. like like you shouldn't care that there's that much technology on board and all of that just adds weight and burns energy. I mean, I, um, Oh, go ahead. I, I don't, um, Bluetooth's not fast enough. Well, you, you, wires, invent, you'd invent no, wi wires, wires, wires aren't fast enough. Yeah. So the, they're, they're getting latency issues with a wire to your computer. And that's why that's just a power wire that comes down, just the speed of your, the reaching speed of light and latency. This is 12 milliseconds, which should make you be able to wear it without getting sick. And the other thing is, I don't think the Quest actually requires you to have cameras in your house. That's a different VR set, right. if I'm remembering correctly. It does have its own yeah. cameras in it, just not nearly as many. Mm. That's interesting. Okay, yeah, Thanks, I Bradley. think it's just like, yeah, thank you. I think it's just like, the, the the dream is to not be plugged into a desktop computer, right? Like, if you are plugged into a desktop computer, you are anchored, 
And the, the difference, the big difference here, and you can see it in the advertising, right, is they don't, the, the selling point for this is not gaming, right? The selling point for this is you are walking around your house doing your work. No, you're wherever. Not. You're really going to walk mean, around with the, this thing camera projecting in, in into you what your ambient really? I mean that's the pitch. That's the pitch, right? Seems ludicrous. So right? I think so I think like for that you don't want to be attached to a computer. You want to walk around in a meeting, right? You want to be able to walk around in your own space. You don't want to be pulled back by a cord. Of course, it only has 2 hours of battery power, so that part's not so great. And also but I mean, the only way to enter text, unless you feel like doing this on a keyboard, is by dictating, <clears throat> which means everybody around you is hearing every message you're sending. Well, you can you can Bluetooth a keyboard, or it pairs with a Mac, so right. you can pair it with your existing Mac. But like, I think it's I think we're sort of like missing who the intended audience is, right? I don't think this is the final version of this device by a long shot, right? Like, it's this is a toy that you sell to your richest and most loyal users because apple is good at that to fund the next version and the rich loyal users they're not they're not doing like complicated shit. they're doing zoom calls with their executives and their employees and they're looking at slideshows right exactly what's in the demo video and for that you want it to work in this particular way and this because is, they're your leaders that'll get other people on and this is that big a leap over the experience we would have in zoom here with a slide share you know share screen presentation it's that that much of a quantum leap I, above i it's it's a it's a different class of product so like you imagine putting i i don't but one would one would imagine putting on the headset walking around the house sitting down and flopping yourself down on the couch you've got a movie over here you've got your laptop screen here you've got zoom stuff over here and you know you grab the zoom stuff and you look at somebody's face and then you put it back you're doing like a whole bunch of like computing stuff in this big expansive virtual monitor right it's yeah. and it's, if I'm, it's not if what I'm, we're doing here. It's not like getting stuck in front of a laptop with a you know a webcam. It's just completely different experience. And like right now, you know, I mean, I just I just had the experience of like, oh, I wanted to go turn a light on, and I had to you know unplug. I had to take off my earphones, pull out the jack, um, so the speaker would be functioning again, so I would hear what was being said as I went across the room and turn on the light, come back, do this, turn the camera, you know, and I would have been able to do that seamlessly if I was, yeah. you know, wearing this thing. But, and but, right. another thing that I, I just wondered about in relation to that, I didn't see the demo, but did I gather that, I mean, obviously, if there were if there were an external camera on me, it would be seeing me wearing goggles. And there's a there's a an AI generated well, I don't know if it's AI generated, but it's you know a, a generated image of you as you would look if you weren't wearing the goggles when you're on a Zoom call. Yeah, that's that's part of the pitch. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, also, I do think like the price is intentionally higher, probably higher than it needs to be because they are pricing out all but their intended audience, right? And then and once you get the intended audience on there, they're going to influence others to get on there. One of the comments I said the choice said, architecture. <clears throat> Sorry, go ahead, Michael. The, the choice architecture is such, such that you say, like, you know, this thing is $3,500, and then they come in with the, the mass model that's only... 1500 competitive with, you know, Oculus and everybody's going, oh boy, Apple's got this thing now that's like less than half price. Whereas if, if they'd come in at the same price as Oculus, it would have been, oh, huh. Yeah. yeah. One, an interesting comment I saw go by was that this is the Apple Lisa version of the technology. That, you know, the Lisa came in at $10,000, the Mac came in at 3000. Uh, and a whole lot of stuff got done in between the two uh etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's not I, I, and and how much was the newton I, compared to the you know the ipod or the iphone yeah <laughs> i think it's more than that right i think like they are so that 
it's so focused on anything other than gaming applications, right? So I think what the sale pitch is, right? You sell this to your, it gets sold to your boss and they show up in your next meeting as a virtual person. And then when they, and then you, you want to imitate that, right? Like, I don't know if you saw the new, the lady who took over Twitter, right? She, she led soul cycle classes in the office. And if you wanted to get a promotion you showed up for the soul cycle class. holy crap so <laughs> so this is the same sort of thing right you yeah. you you're you give it to the bosses and then everyone else wants to parrot them and that's how you sell it wow so I, I think they're playing in the same space as uh, as the as the met as meta oh, dear God. as facebook <laughs> Sorry. and their whole metaverse play um where ultimately where where that's presumably how it is yeah people logging into the office people being really remote yet getting to enjoy one another's presence in a virtual environment right um uh, yeah presumably that's where we're headed with this stuff right? really, yeah and this is really about really kicking like, meta in the note in the gonads that's what this indeed, is right indeed. you you look at that experience that they demonstrated here versus the meta experience why would anyone even want to consider the meta experience now. Nobody wants that. Nobody ever wanted it, but now you've got an alternative. And that, who wants and to go to a party in sucks place? Yeah, the meta experience of the sort of like, you know, I don't know how to even describe the level of the graphics that that the limbless Zuck was, you know, walking around in. I thought it was I thought it was really interesting that People were saying that this is the first time that Apple's introduced a product where the CEO has not been visible using the product. Um, you know, when Cook did the Apple Watch and when Jobs did, you know, iPhone, all those things. Um, and and I think one of the reasons might have been how like obnoxious and stupid it was that Zuckerberg featured himself. In demonstrating, you know, his vision of the metaverse, like, <laughs> oh, there's something we don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. And I and I mean, they've done practice with the really high price point for selling it as a luxury item before, right? The first iWatch, they had models that sold for 10k, right? You you price it like a luxury item, you treat it like a luxury, item, and you sell exactly. it like a luxury item. So let's say they let's say they um, cut the price by three quarters, and they triple the battery life to six hours, and uh, like you know make things faster, lighter, brighter, whiter. Um, is it still something you want to use for anything more than a couple hours in a day for some special occasion? Is this something you're going to actually strap on in the morning and wear? I mean, we, th it's so hard to tell, right? How heavy is it? How hot is it? How I, I just can't imagine wearing stuff. a thing all day. I mean, I, I, I wear these when I sit and have to read. Other people have to wear glasses all day long. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, but this it, is really it, different it feels, from that. It feels to me like not, not exactly the same, but it's a similar kind of question to, I'm used to my desktop. Why would I carry this little, like, tablet thing around that has no keyboard and a tiny screen why would i do that what what you know I'm, i can see myself using this for about 10 minutes and then throwing the thing away right and what we do nowadays is walk around with our main device often being this little tablet thing and once in a while we get to dock at a, at a desk with a keyboard and all that kind of stuff and so it's not that you use an, an iphone for you know, eight hours at a time. I can actually use this desktop for eight hours at a time. But you use it like continuously a little bit at a time for the whole day and the whole night and the whole day next. You know, it's like it, it lives with you. It's it, it's part of it's part of where you go to interact with the world, right? But agree with everything you just said, except directionally, the smartphone is smaller, lighter, cheaper, and eminently portable, and it gives you the power, almost yeah, all the power it, it, of the big device. Except that the the face the the face hugger, uh, the face hugger lets you immersively experience uh, a three D world that you cannot experience anywhere else. 
Right. How much would that weigh? So, so, so really the 3D experience has to be really compelling and I have not seen that yet. Uh, Flanson, go ahead. You wanted to talk. No, no, precisely. I guess what Peter uh, made the point, I think, how much will the world be projected way? In particular, if you only reduce it to projecting, say, 4K screens in every direction, including the ceiling, which is like a, I guess, a dream, uh, you know, how much those displays will weigh? So maybe, you know, this is the argument for virtuality, uh, you know, changing that um, calculation. Yeah, and I mean, I do see, like, if it's not too heavy and it's not too hot, right? I have a giant screen here at home. Um, if I moved or I was like traveling and I knew I had to work during travel, I'd plug it in and have the giant screen to go because it's on my face. Um, right. Like, and I could see they had the example of using it in the plane. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely use something like that in a plane. You're going to sure. dictate your emails on a plane. Well, I'm not going to yeah, dictate gonna emails. Them. I'm going to get a Bluetooth. I'm going to get a Bluetooth keyboard. I have a Bluetooth. I carry a Bluetooth keyboard with me already. Right. For everywhere, right? Like it's fine. I carry one that connects to my phone, and I carry one that connects to my laptop. And I put the laptop on a laptop stand whenever I know I'm going to be like more than a couple of days, and I have to work from home, from like a hotel room. I don't. I don't see any of those being the obstacle. I think the big obstacle is the question of one: Am I going to feel like shit using it? For whatever reason, uh, motion sickness, it's too heavy, it's too hot, whatever. And two, like, how does it evolve into alternative pieces of itself, right? Once one, once your boss has a virtual self in the meeting, everybody's going to want that regardless of whether you're wearing a face hugger or not. And once anyone gets used to the idea of using hand controls to work at stuff, right? You're going to be plugging in the next version of your camera that we're looking through right now is going to be a like setup that lets me do stuff like this while uh, during the day. And that would be great. You know, like what happens when you get repetitive motion problems? It's because you're stuck in keyboard and mouse position. I have a tablet I use for when my mouse hand hurts and I don't even use it as much as I did when I was in like my in like my college years, right? So like an alternative control system that they're prototyping here, that's gonna go far. It doesn't have to be strapped on your face. Mm -hmm. It's about the pieces, I think, more than it is the whole. Oh, Flancy and then Michael? You had raised your hand. Yes, yes, thank you. I mean, uh, no, just to say, uh, uh, Adam also said it very well. Like, so just, um, I think the implic and, and what we've been going towards is like the implication of the technology, if it works, for example, like I said, like, oh, 4K is space everywhere. Maybe it be there yet, but if we can extrapolate and have a relatively high confidence that that, that will be unlocked next year or so on, uh, I guess it, it just remains interesting, the, interesting the, the social implications of that. In particular, as we hopefully get cheaper and more open alternatives and so on. Uh, you know, as the as hardware gets commodified. And that's one thing. And the other, the other is like, I don't know if I, 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 um, I saw this, I, I didn't see, uh, see this mentioned as another use case, but recently, uh, unfortunately, um, someone I love uh, had to spend that time in the hospital and it was really, really uh, boring. <laughs> The mobile phone, uh, you know, connected uh, here, and uh, you know, to an extent that you know, actually made me think of previous hospital stays and how the internet everywhere has changed things. I could imagine, you know, for someone who unfortunately has to be, you know, uh, secluded, uh, low mobility, and, and or with health issues, uh, this kind of device, you know, uh, is like a very long airplane airplane ride. Um, Sean, do you have background music? Oh, <laughs> uh, you, my neighborhood you, does. Oh, and it's you cool. Can just, you can just uh, mute. There's, I'm, I'm cool there's, getting distracted. There's, there's a music start. school across the playground. Ah, oh, nice. I was going to okay. start dancing say, YMCA play here. Mm. Um, thank you. Uh, sorry, Michael. Go ahead. Sure. Um, a, a couple of things. I, one is, I do feel like Jerry, like thinking about. As, as you are, are I, I get your sort of inability to imagine like, well, well I, why would I want to 
you know, that much. But for me, I'm not, I don't know if I'm speaking for you. Think about the amount of time you spend in this position and think about the inadequacy of so many of the experiences that you can have with that like distanced small thing and like if you're thinking about it as an alternative experience to that as well as an alternative experience to having to sit in one place tethered to your desktop um, without being able to walk around with a light keyboard and the combination of those two things both being better i think will lead people to spend a lot of hours you know some some strong combination of the hours that they spend you know with this thing in front of them and sitting at a desktop then i i i think the big thing that's we're not even aware of right now is the augmented reality what what augmented reality would be with one of these things on that the closest thing we have is when we're walking around with our handheld device and we read um you know a qr code to find out something about something or we recognize a plant or we you know do all those things there will be so much more of that that's possible when you've got these goggles on like just you know looking at your bookshelf with you know character recognition that like you can say oh you know or looking at the bookshelf in a bookstore um, with character recognition that tells you this thing okay here's like all the information on that your imdb listing for an actor whose face you're looking at i mean there, there are probably going to be all kinds of services around giving you information about stuff that you're looking at without having to you know find the thing with the qr code and read it with your um with mm -hmm. your phone mm -hmm. i think the order is sean aram me uh i shared a link uh, to what is it uh uh, croquet examples index.html gallery. Um, uh, it's uh, it's an instance of um, open uh, of croquet, which is part of the Squeak uh, ecosystem, mm -hmm. um, at, and it's a collaborative environment where one can actually <laughs> one can actually go through the door behind you when you enter. Anyway, you can go into the adjacent uh, sort of factory floor area. And you can actually um, collaboratively code in the squeak environment um, and, manip and um, manipulate uh, the simulation, the factory simulation that's, that you're walking around in. Um, and I, I'm just gesturing here at, at this whole <laughs> space, pun intended, of uh, new collaborative modalities that are available um, uh, through that, through that kind of metaphor. And um, uh, have we had experience with oh, what is it called? Um, Gather Town. Uh, several of us have of several of us have been in Gather Town meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's a very uh, <laughs> eight bit <laughs> uh, sort of a uh, yes. Very cheesy uh, gesture at uh, what might be possible, right? And so one can start to get a sense of <laughs> what could be cool about uh, uh, VR gatherings uh, with Gather Town, but only just a tiny, tiny hint. Um, I think Croquet does a better job. Over. Thank you. Aran? Yeah, I also think that there's like, I think people underestimate the value of. It's not really a good name for it. I'm going to just call it a third screen. Um, a third screen in their environment in terms of giving them other methods of interacting with computing power, right? So we have our first screen, and that's our computer. And that has a very stationary effect, right? Even if you have a laptop, you're rarely moving around. And if you are in some place weird with it, you're probably going to be very uncomfortable because Despite being called a laptop, it's really not made for your lap. Um, and we have the second screen, which is your like phone device. 
which is fine, but very limited. Even if it's very powerful, the systems that run on phones make it very difficult to really use them to get things done outside of a very small subset of things that are involved piping, right? It's basically typing stuff. And even then, it's not great for typing stuff, but it's fine, right? And I think like there is a very high value for what I think of as like the third device, something that is lightweight, that is portable, and that is ah, fairly high powered, right? That's sort of where like MacBook Airs sit or are trying to sit somewhat successfully. Um, or I don't if you remember, like there used to be um, like the mini book trend that was around for a couple of years. I think I still have one in my closet where you get like laptops that are like this big by this big. Um, and then like I recently got a, a Steam Deck, um, which is like, 10 times more powerful than my desktop computer and only slightly bigger than a Nintendo Switch. Is it a, uh, is it a cyberpunk thing, a steampunk thing with like, a, do you have to stoke it with coal? <laughs> no, no, it's the company Steam. It's a gaming company. Oh, okay. Right? Which is <laughs> I'm, the really I'm relieved, impressive. actually. It sounds less dangerous. Yeah, which is the really impressive thing, right? You have this device here, which is basically rivaling, like if I were to put together a computer that could handle the same level of gaming that this device can, it would probably cost like $2,000 easy. And the most expensive version of this is $600, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Feel better, Fonsian. Yeah, feel better, Fonsian. Thank uh, you. When nice I see you. <laughs> nice to meet you. But like this sort of device, and this one also, only two hours of battery life on the Steam Deck uh, when you're really using it. But it has a lot of value in my like life because it is a heavy, it is a a powerful device that I can still pick up and move around with. Um, and it turns out that like I didn't think it would have a lot of value in that sense, but it turns out that it does have a lot of value. That once you have something that's like that, that sits between your phone and your computer in terms of efficacy it opens up all sorts of different modes of interacting with digital artifacts. Um, and I think that like this, this device that Apple has launched, it's not going to be that yet, but I think like you can't get to there from here without some middle steps. And I think that's a middle step. Cool. Um, well, and the whole AR modality is uh, is is essentially unexplored uh, in terms of its real potential, right? So, um, so yeah, uh, he, this thing is hands free, right? <laughs> so, so you can be in the kitchen working on whatever, and uh, and still be you know reading, consuming media, interacting with people, um, and so on effectively. Right? Well, if your hands if your hands are tied up cooking or kneading dough, I'm unclear that you can actually gesture or, or select things. You could watch things, no problem. You could be on a call, but you couldn't mute the call because you'd have to clean your hands and make a gesture. Right? <laughs> I, I, How I, clean I, would you have to make your hands? I, I, I think no idea. There's, it, it, it can detect when you pinch, right? So you, you yeah. can be covered with dough maybe and, uh, and stuff. Too. Let me throw a few things on here. I'm hoping that link works. I don't know. I wasn't... I, I'm trying to screen share something. So in 1992, I started a research service called Continuous Information Environments. That link is the di scope diagram to that service. And if you look there, you'll see uh, I was writing about all the piece parts that make up the smartphone, except I didn't invent the smartphone. I did not see it coming. We were writing about feature phones. Everything had a keypad on it and a tiny display and all that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, this guy, Steve Jobs, uh, sort of slave drives a bunch of really brilliant people to go uh, not only glue together a bunch of, of stuff that hadn't been glued together much before, but then sand off all the hard edges so the thing didn't have a blue screen of death. <clears throat> it felt like a river stone. <clears throat> I mean, to me, like I was in the neighborhood looking and I did not predict uh, the, the iPhone in 2007. Um, I thought cameras on, on mobile phones were before that, before that we were starting to see some cameras on phones, I thought they were a distraction. I thought they were basically the cell phone companies trying to get us to, to use up more bits on their network. I was really wrong about that. 
I didn't like the iPod, the original iPod going color. I was like, black and white's fine. What the hell's up with this color thing? Color's such a waste of energy, and I don't know, color. I was totally wrong about that. I was right about 3D TV. I was right about a whole bunch of other kinds of things. <laughs> and, <clears throat> Aram, when you mentioned AR, if, I find it really interesting because Pete was saying, look at what the demo was uh, at WWDC. Um, they demoed zero AR. They have some very interesting things about you can, there's a knob where you can dim out your ambient environment and replace it with whatever ambient environment you want, which means you're just going to whack people because you're going to forget where you are. But um, you can sort of see your neighbors kind of or not, and that's being regenerated in front of your eyes. It's, it's just, you're just tuning which camera you're paying attention to or which, you, you're just tuning actually which uh, generated image you're uh, paying attention to or, or, or transmit. That, that's really interesting, right? Because I didn't realize it has side cameras because you can't yeah. look to your side, but you sort of can. It's, it's a little bit like the, uh, the helmets in the F-35 uh, fighter jet now let you see all around the aircraft. So modern jet, modern jet fighters have heads-up display that let you do this, and there's enough cameras on board that you actually, in real time, can do that. Go ahead. I, I just disagree. I think the whole demo was AR, right? How? Like, in theory, that's how AR is supposed to work. You have the real environment, and you overlay it with... Nothing was overlaid on the real... Sorry, you. there was an overlay, but there was no anchoring, meaning... If you were to get up and move around, uh, and I wonder, you know, how do you decide this? If I if I get up and leave the couch, does my display stay over there, or does my display move with me? I bet you that's a UI option. Yeah, I and I bet you that's a confusing UI anchoring. option. I bet you that's a confusing UI option because I tried yeah. using multiple desktops in Mac OS, total loss for me. Cannot use multiple desktops. Did not understand how to make that work at all, and. I've used other screens. I, we just bought an external display for, for April, who is just using it basically as like a slideshow screensaver right now because where, how do I get my mouse over there? It's oriented where? It's, it's like kind of hard to figure out to manipulate them. So, so I, I think that extra screen real estate is super useful. I've never figured out how to conquer that sucker in some way. And I think it takes somebody who's willing to devote some, some brain overhead um, to sort of sit with that and, and, and do that. And then, then you can kind of lick it. Um, and then like folding phones, who thought a folding phone would be anything? I would never buy a folding phone. I haven't seen the use case at all, but you know, you got to do some fancy stuff at some point. So we haven't talked about like contact lens, uh, sort of, uh, computing and there's people actually researching contact lens displays, kind of interesting, don't know. But, it, but for me, if you could boil this thing down to a contact lens size, I guess I'd use it. I don't know. I don't know that I'd I mean, want to be putting stuff in my eyes every morning kind of thing. No, but, I want it to this size. That's where the optimal situation is for me. Yeah. Well, um, I want the ability to take it off and put I mean, that the, the one thing that seems really bad to me is, you know, when you're holding your phone like this, that's that's all you have to do. I mean, the idea that you have to like yeah. take off this encumbrance to deal with something else seems the biggest. Well, I mean, that's me. that's why you can see the outside in it, right? So you don't yeah. have to take it off, right? The dream of this device is you don't ever take it off. Wow, uh, I really? mean, that's what it. That's what they presented in their demo video that they had. So you never get right? to see other people's it's, faces again. Yeah, the guy is, has it is, on. He such sees a dystopian future for me. So dystopian. I'm just saying, he sees the outside. He plays ball with his kid while he's working on a spreadsheet. You know, he projects the video screen larger. And four uh, years, four years from now, they'll pins. laugh at that demo because look how clunky the gear was back then. Yeah, I got uh, Steve Mann and his iTap. Uh... Technology. I mean, the guy's been living like that essentially yeah. for what is it, thirty plus years, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Sorry. I mean, <clears throat> what a pioneer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I just think it's this is the on ramp for the rest of us to be able to, you know. Yeah. Eventually get there. Yeah. I just like that's the thing. Like, I have always been a big screen space person, and having fundamentally infinite screen space is something. I could get a lot of use out of personally. And I talked like, and what was interesting to me is one of the people who I talked to who instantly was like, I would use the hell out of that as some art, artists, right? Which are, have always been Apple's sort of core thing. 
right? You, if you can hook it up to a tablet, then it makes it very easy to sketch, to move things around, to pin the stuff that you're basing off of. And that makes sense to me. I mean, what I'm looking at here is one very large screen, which I always fill up, but connected to this laptop, there is a second screen that's up there. And then on the other side of me is another computer with four more screens. Four? I, four and more? I fill them up. So yeah, of varying are, sizes. So right this minute, you just described you have six screens in front of you. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I have to turn to get to the ones well, that's over good. here. Um, but like, I find it very useful to have the full totally. range. That's impressive. Um, and wow. I use them all. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. I, I use three often and, and that's like, it's great. And, you know, I, I actually, I accidentally ejected myself from the meeting when you were going on about how terrible that seemed. And I was just about to say, okay, boomer. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Which for me to you is pretty funny, but, um, <laughs> Well, I, and yeah. I, was, I, I was, as I was describing earlier, I missed a bunch of turns, you know, early on. I was like, who the hell is going to want cameras on cell phones? That's the stupidest <laughs> idea I've ever heard. I don't, I don't think I thought it was that stupid, but, um, oh, look, we so, got lots of screens here. So, yeah, there's, there's four here of 4K 43 in the middle as the main display and flanked by a couple of 4K 27, 28s, and then with a goofy little um, eight inch display down here for, you know, sort of Skype, social media things. Um, cause the, basically, yeah. Um, pixels, uh, <laughs> our eyeballs are, are the fastest channel to the brain. Right. And so the more pixels, the better. But and I, so, yeah, I'm just, so distractible. Whole... How do you stay focused with that much material around you? How do you stay focused? Yeah, if yeah. What you have to do is is perform tasks, uh, basically task switching to jump around between um, between. Which means windows. different desktops. Well, so so when when doing heavy developing, you know, most of my central screen is Emacs, Emacs, Emacs. But uh -huh. then you know, there are debuggers. There's there's web, there's documents. Oh, you took a picture of your setup. Thank there's, you. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's you know the 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 interface that i'm actually working on there's you know so there's there's at least you know five or six different domains of information that are that are needed and and yeah when 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 one is dealing with rivers of code well <laughs> you want to see it you want to see everything in scope right because if you can't see it all well then what are you doing you're you're having to actually interact with you're having to do in effect window management to to access information and if instead it's all there painted on on the retina basically what you're doing is you're expanding your functional um um short-term memory so yeah and i would add it's that, like oh i was just going to add a really great example of this if you haven't had a chance to use it yet is the arc browser i just got an access code for it and it instantly clicked for me and the biggest feature that instantly clicked for me was one space management. So you can have a bunch of tabs in one space and then dismiss them and go to a different space. But more than that, right? Like here, let me switch to something that, it doesn't matter. You can see my anonymization code I'm working on for work. <laughs> um, right, so like here is what it looks like when I'm working on, right? So there's, uh, we're I'm building like a tool to anonymize Facebook events here, right? Yeah. So I can split it. And then if I need to check like the Facebook documentation, I'm going to make this bigger. And then I'm going to just go and uh, oops, that was the wrong one. Hmm. Right. Gentis here and then add another window here. So are right. you tile different things together? Oops. Yeah, right. Oh. See, so now I can do that. And if I need to switch back to my tickets, looks like Fedwick. Those, yeah, there's my tickets, right? I can look up documentation on its own thing. And if I want to take a break, there's a different space here for like fun stuff. I can go check my Blue Sky account, or um, it was just somebody recommended this thing to me. But one of the cool things is like when it's a new window, it pops in a little thing. You can choose whether, right? Like, it's all like weight tools for window management. Um, 
because yeah, you want a, I, I don't know. I want a lot of stuff in front of me. I know it ain't for everyone, but for me, it's great. So, uh, so yeah, this, this, this 3d metaphor makes it possible for us to basically combine the memory palace to, to <laughs> instantiate the memory palace, right. As a means of access to, uh, to the, the data, the one. So, so one can task switch. The Oops. I think we lost. Sean has Sean has froze on. Um, you're back. You froze on us for a second. Did my voice freeze too? Yes. Yeah. Oh, how awkward. So, so basically, one can one can tool around in a three space rendition of one's memory palace um, to to get to localize one's uh, one's information access. I. I mean, I, walk over to the shop, walk over to the kitchen, walk over to the, you know, <laughs> collaborative, you know, walk over to the OGM um, room, right? Are, are you talking about like the, the screens as manifestations? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th that's the thing yeah. I was going to say is like, you know, when I have multiple screens, I can concentrate better because I can concentrate completely, you know, I, I you know, I'm mousing stuff, dragging stuff off the the screen I'm focusing on. So I'm only focusing on one thing. It's a lot less cluttered than what I have to deal with when I have like, you know, my browser in 16 tabs and finder windows and, you know, some other apps running on an individual screen, um, yeah. which just feels real junky. Yeah. Um, totally. Yeah. I, I am I'm kind of delighted to discover that three of us are three plus monitor humans, meaning uh, three of us have at least three monitors, you know, in their preferred mode for for working. I'm a one monitor guy, kind of would would have an extended monitor, but move around so much with my machine, blah blah blah. I'm pretty happy with one, and I'm way too distracted just with the number of tabs I have in a single. Chrome window because I don't even do multiple instances of Chrome. What do you think about what Michael said though? Which part? I, I've got two. I've got two screens, and I've got two other ones that I don't really use around me. So I've okay, I was just about to ask but, you what you what you had. But um, I I use two screens, and what Michael said is you know you drag you drag something to that screen, and then you can focus on it on that screen, and it's not cluttering up this screen or vice versa, right? It, I I agree with Michael. It's actually less cluttered the more screens you have because it gives you real estate to filter out the stuff that you don't need on whatever screen that you want to focus on right now. So interestingly, everything you just said, I would say is a virtue of maximizing your current application on one screen and not letting anything distract you. And then yeah, switching totally to, agree. And, and you can switch but, endlessly. But if you like, I have if you a lot essentially of stuff I could switch to. if you have two places or three places you can maximize a screen to, then you don't like you're not paying attention to three screens at once. You're always paying attention to one screen. But it's easier to flip back and forth between a physical screen than flipping the maximized version of whatever you've got on one screen. When, when, you're doing the, an interesting when, thing in your head that you're virtualizing. You're essentially virtualizing. I have endless real. Monitors. I have endless screen real estate in my head because I know that I have an endless number of tabs I could switch to, on a single screen. When when, when the task that you're working on has multiple facets right. that you need to interact with simultaneously, documentation, blah, you know, debugging the code, the interface, you know, and things, right? Well. Do, it, it doesn't it isn't a, it a violent disruption of flow to have to sort of find yourself dicking around swip, switching around between windows i think if i did I, I don't write to, code so i don't have reasons i don't have reasons to have documentation yeah. open next to this next to that i think that yeah. and i i generate i generate prose and I do some simple video editing. If I did more complicated video editing, I'd want to have a lot of real estate to put all the different pieces that I'm working with or whatever up, but I don't. Um, I don't know that I have activities in my life that every now and then I'm like, damn, I wish I had a little bit more real estate right now to, to do X or whatever. And um, it's really interesting. I mean, you know, think about it this way. It's like if you're very, let's say, you're very used to working on a kid's school desk, 
And <laughs> if you were suddenly introduced to a gigantic work surface, would would it really overwhelm you? So no, I you'd take the I, my, same stuff you were working on on the kids' desk and you'd spread it out nicely, so you had some room to work on the one thing you're working on, and maybe you'd even have two projects that were halfway done that were in different places on the counter, and you know, I mean, it's just like it's just space. Well, it, it's yeah, just space I, I, that you can control I, really easily. And we and these are really big. I mean, haven't you had ever had the experience of like you're working with a, a web page that you're cutting and pasting something from and you're doing it into a like a word doc or you know whatever i mean you're doing different things and you're having to make windows be half the size of your screen and your browser you know and then you've got a zoom it's just why there's no need 